and I will call the meeting to order at 6.30. Um, I think we're going to take a moment to go around the table and introduce ourselves and then go around the audience and the public and ask you just to say your name. So Gabby, we'll start with you. Gabby Caprita. Veranda Porsche. Peter Root. Sheila Morse. Gordon Little. Richard Wazanski. And then... Uh, Janet DeRosia. That's right, Janet, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Nick Jones-Rulos. Hi, Nick. Dan Zembrowski. Mary Ann Lawrence. John Sargent. Hi, Tammy Sargent. Will Wonus. Steve Webke. Dolores Clark. Peter Thurl. Saunders Whittlesey. Thank you, everybody. So, um, under the uh, sign-in sheet, there is a multi-page document called Rules of Procedure, um, but the basic rule is that all comments are directed to me for um, anything in, in your way to be called on to be heard, um, and uh, we just expect that people will be respectful. Let's get off. <laughs> so, um, are there new additions to the agenda for this evening? Yes. Uh Appointment of a health officer under new business. Okay. Are there changes to the agenda order? Um, do I? Did everyone get a chance to read the minutes of the regular meeting of April twenty third? Mm -hmm. And any discussion? Would I? I move that the minutes of that meeting be accepted. Yes. Thank you, Richard. Mm -hmm. A second. And Miranda seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Dan, so yeah. you have a general update for us? Yeah, we're still grading the road, still trying to get caught up. Um, hopefully by the end of next week we'll be pretty well caught up on them, then we'll be starting second time around. So then we'll be setting culverts and doing some other work. So just trying to get the road smooth up. Thank you. Um, the other thing on our highway agenda is the discussion about the purchase of a mini excavator, and I believe um, we had we had some information in our meeting materials folder. However, Dan was able to negotiate some different prices th today, and so we have an updated. You just you were, you were able to do that, right? Peter? I did uh, not on this sheet, but I'll give you the numbers here. So. Oh, this is the regular one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the cost of the John Deere was updated to $111,900. $111,900? Yep. And the Komatsu is $112,234. And I'll let Dan take over for the rest. Yeah. That, all them prices include all the like, warranties, uh, service contracts, and uh, delivered to the shop. And delivery date on any of them is going to be at least three weeks. The Komatsu, Dan, that's true on the warranty as well? Yeah, they're all, okay. all the, the Komatsu and the, and the, and the deer, deer are both warranties. Exact okay. same warranties. Okay. Did you, you, you tested some out, right? You, yeah. you tested all of them out, I assume? Yeah. It is the road crew have a recommendation? So the boys left it up to the boys and they like the John Deere, so. And they're going to be a little bit closer on service. The John Deere is out of Springfield. Uh, Komatsu, their base, the region is out of Albany, but they have a store in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kubota is out of uh, Holyoke, Mass. So. so when you say they're going to be a little less in service, that means Spring, the mileage? Komatsu. No, in that service contract, that includes everything. Okay. Mileage and everything. How much is the service, or the warranty piece of it, Dan, roughly? Uh, Listed on the sheet there. Well, yeah, for the for the deer, he knocked some money off that. It was originally about sixty five hundred for a two thousand hours three year. And he and, took it all off. And the Komatsu, their service contract was already figured in the price of the machine, but the ex extended warranty was not. So that would have been an extra. But with everything, all the the service contract and the Extended warranties are all figured in on that total price. I'm sorry. It says no warranty costs for the John Deere. So that's it's, it's figured, included it's in the 107,000? They're, they're all they're figured in. Into the purchase one, price. One of them's not figured in, the other one is. So I mean, that's, 
One had the extended warranty figured in with it, the John Deere did. Okay. The Komatsu did not. Okay. So that was an add-on add there. Okay. And the Kubota was figured in, in the price too, so. Um, we were able to take the um, information that Gabby, Richard, and Danny, and Peter worked on. Um, the, this, the purchase of this would come out of the Highway Reserve Fund. The current balance is 247. The, if we were to approve the purchase of the John Deere, the price would be about a hundred. The balance after, at the end of this fiscal year, would be about 130 thousand, roughly. I'm sorry, 135 thousand, roughly. Um, so I don't know. Does anybody? Talked about this quite a bit. Does, do people have questions? One second, Dolores, please. Um, Dolores? Yes. Um, I am wondering if you get an excavator, a couple things. What what will an excavator do that our new backhoe will not do? And another thing is when you get an excavator, are we now going to need a um, trailer to yes. haul it around with? Yes, we are going to need a trailer. Right now, I got one of the locals that can move it. I've been pricing trailers. Uh, We've been online looking at used trailers go from anywhere from eight thousand dollars up. A brand new one's going to run you a little over fifteen thousand for a twenty-four uh, for a uh, fourteen-ton trailer. And that's delivered to the shop. I've been, been getting some prices. And the excavator is with all this new stuff that we got through stone line ditching. Uh huh. The backhoe is too. It takes you forever to do it. The Didn't we just get a new backhoe? Yeah, last we did. Year? But the excavator is more versatile. What we got to do. So and it's a lot easier doing culverts with it. And I mean, the back. We still need a backhoe no matter what. Uh huh. But some of these places that we got to do stone line ditching, you do a scoop, you got to move. You do a scoop, you got to move. At least with an excavator, you can keep sideways and keep moving as you're going. It's very. The backhoe is very slow. Mm -hmm. So, and we have it. enough of those ditches that it's really going to make it worth yeah. having a truck and yeah, we not do. having to have a trailer. Yep. And with this all this new storm line, storm water stuff we got to deal with, there's going to be a lot more stone line ditching, like you see over on Cemetery Hill. You're going to see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So, it's to keep the keep the soil out of the the brooks. Okay. So. I think um, in the last, I think Danny, you've asked for one for the last three years. Yes. And every year we've convinced you to rent one for the summer months. Um, and it's, but I think there, you all did a cost benefit analysis this year, Gabby, am I correct? And decided that it would make and more sense. Two years ago. And then we, this time. That, yeah. yeah to well, and it just it. with F46, with all the stone line ditches, I mean, right. it's just, it just makes sense rather than renting it at this point. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be different if we didn't have Act 46 and they weren't requiring stone line ditches on any every hydrologically connected road, essentially, for pretreatment of water before it goes into a, a stream or other uh, a body of water, I guess is the best way to put it. So I think it makes sense giving all those things combined. Thank you. One thing about us having our own machine, when you rent one, mm -hmm. you got to work it. You get three or four rain days there that you can't work it. So you're paying $4,000 a month for a machine. Mm -hmm. At least with us, that, that we own a machine, we can use it when we want it. We got it at our But team. you're paying for it when you're not using it. Right, yeah. So I mean, you still pay, the grader sits, <laughs> the loader sits, everything sits, even the trucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you got it when, it's your, when you need it, is the biggest thing. So. And they're a lot more handier too, because we can do a lot more work with it. We got a a hammer that went on our backhoe so we can hammer some ledge out here and here in places. Uh -huh. And with this machine, I, I changed the, when these guys spec it, the John Deere comes through with Craig, which is about ten to $12,000 more than what the Wainroy equipment is. But I can take that hammer and I can run it on the, the new excavator or the backhoe. I got it so it's interchangeable. Um, so I'll make a motion to purchase the John Deere mini excavator and for the purchase to come out of the current balance of the Highway Reserve Fund in the amount of, and Peter correct me if I'm wrong because I, yep, the okay. spreadsheet isn't correct, but 
$111,900. That is correct. I second that motion. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Danny, for doing that work. Thank, Thank you. you for putting the spreadsheet Thank together, you. Peter. Thank you. I knew something fell. <laughs> um, Mary and Lawrence, you are up. Hi. Hi. Um, I just came because I'm actually closing my business tomorrow. And tomorrow? <laughs> well, um, and I just wanted to reassure the board that I'm still happy to do the dog pound duties. Um, I talked it over with my husband today, and we, uh, I will still hold on to quite a bit of the equipment. I have a dog that has to be crated anyway, so we plan to make a space so that we'll have at least one. So far, I've only had, well, with the exception of two weeks ago, I had two dogs brought to me. It's only been a single dog. And if I'm not mistaken, last year I didn't have one dog brought to me, hmm. thanks to social media. I mean, honestly, that's the, been the biggest mm. help with yeah. people who, you know, yeah. find dogs. I, and the first thing I do is if I'm not available, I tell them, can you put them on Facebook? And then I usually don't have to it's good. touch my hands on them. Um, so I just wanted to reassure show the board that I'm still happy to do that if that's what so, you guys want So to. no pause for claws? No. 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 Wow. No. No. That's going to be a lot. Well, so thank you for <laughs> doing it for so long. 17 years. Wow. Our daughter goes to college in the fall, and I, I started it when she was in wow. 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 Well, thank you. And also, Sorely thank you for um, continuing to be the dog pound resource in the town. That'll be much appreciated still. So. Yeah, it's been a Guilford institution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you going to leave the sign up? <laughs> just ask me, when do you want know me to take the sign up? Because he's tired of having them all around. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But anyway. And that's all I really wanted to say. Great. Well, well, thank, thank you so well, much you. for taking well, the time to Thanks for continuing to tell us. Yeah. Well, well, I appreciate that. Excuse me. Now off to dinner. <laughs> 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 Do we have anybody here from the Franklin Mantras? That's me. Mary's oh. Mary's six son. Oh, okay. Yep. That and that's where I met the guy that created the event. So okay. I know all the roots. I know the history here. So you guys tell me what... So just for, I'm sorry, would you mind just reintroducing yourself? Sure. My name is Saunders Whittlesey. Son. And I'm from Deerfield. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think last select board meeting, or maybe two select board meetings ago, there were some questions among the select board about sure. um, the race, and so, Gabby, I think maybe you had the... Yeah, I mean, I think just with last, I was just curious about how you're going to arrange for, you know, like rescue and yep. coordinate mutual aid and how you're coordinating people on the road because it's getting bigger and bigger which is a testament to what a great race you guys run right but also then it becomes a concern like last year with people blocking the road and um, <clears throat> you know safety issues on the road yeah so there's sort of global things we're doing and then there's some specifics and a lot of it for your own reference if you hear specific comments come in a lot of times those things are things we can go after specifically you know if we have sweet vans that go through if there's a particular problem point you know the event were to grow to an extent that you guys need police protection somewhere. Um, you know, as far as um, the size of the event, what we've done in the global sense is to open up some other lunch areas. So, you know, the first year we did this, we had 58 people, <laughs> and then it got national press. You know, next thing, Guilford covered bridges all over the country. People were like, oh my God. And now manufacturers actually have dirt road bicycles as a result of this. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, I think we probably had couple years that we had over a thousand people eat lunch by the Minot's house there. Whoa. So, so now, now we have three lunch yes. sites um, and those tend to pull anywhere from three to four hundred riders away from the Green River Valley to those other courses. So that's something that we're pushing pretty hard. Like we have a mystery ride that's different every year that people are all excited about and that typically takes three or four hundred off. So we're trying to pull pressure off of Guilford Covered Bridge but of course it's it's one of the iconic sites on the, on the course. Um, Deer Park has always been a concern. So right, and forgive me this, like that right-hand bend, you come down a steep part, and then it makes a full right-hand turn and then heads into another section of descent. We always station EMTs at that point, and the idea is that if there's a call down the hill that someone crashed, then the ambulance is proceeding with traffic down the hill. And then at lunch at Guilford Covered Bridge, we also station a couple of EMTs there. Um, cell service is non-existent, at least 
if anybody we know <laughs> if, if it ever shows up let us know <laughs> usually um there's a, a wireless club that sets up a transmitter there um and that's in contact with our headquarters and different we can kind of relay you know information to cell service that way if need be um I'm trying to think of other Specific thing. Oh, I guess there was a complaint about traffic at the bridge la last year, and that's actually my fault because normally I'm the person that covers the traffic control. So about five, six years ago, Addison had made the comment to me about people kind of getting stuck. Um, so my job actually became, once I delivered supplies, I actually handled traffic control at the bridge until last year when I was up at the new, the new lunch site. And I mean, I delegate. It was just poor delegation on my part. Um, so I think we can cover that one. I mean, basically... You know, if someone's coming either up Green River Valley or comes down Jacksonville Stage, you know, I just look at them. I'm like, you're going left, you're going straight. They tell me if they're going straight through the bridge, I run through, stop traffic, and pull them through. It's, I mean, it's a minute's delay at worst. Um, and then if someone shows up on the other side, kind of the reverse process, hold traffic, bring bring the vehicle through. Um, uh, you know, other specific complaints that we should look at for this I year? I mean, I personally heard a number about people riding across the road, so cars were getting jammed up. That's what I personally yeah, and that's, that's, that's the, the ones that I heard the one to control. most. Understand it's not a race. Um, and, you know, we have, I mean, it's everything from the 100 mile ride to actually the, the family ride that's 10 miles comes up to the covered bridge there, too. So there's a whole mix of abilities that come in. And I think probably the hardest one is after lunch, people heading back down Green River Road. Um, and that one, I mean, you have to tell me how much complaint you're getting and it's something we can potentially try mm -hmm. to work on. Um, I mean, it, that is absolutely the hardest part. How do you kind of address that with the group ahead of time? I mean, is there a discussion? That might be enough to just be an awareness that, you know, you incredibly, know. Um, every year, a third to a half of our riders are first timers at the event. Um, you know, we always send out a culture statement and, you know, we're getting, you know, half to two thirds of our people are coming from suburban or urban areas where it's like, oh, we're out in the countryside, you know, take a nap in the middle of the street kind of thing. <laughs> so, you know, you put those out there, but it's also, you know, it's one of those things when you get out, you know, we have about 300 miles of roads that we're trying to control on the given day. Um, you know, it, it happens and, and mm -hmm. you know, how we react to it is going to, you know, amount to how much complaint we're getting and, and what approaches we can take to specific spots. Of which I will say, Green River Road is, that's probably the busiest one between 1 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. on the day of the event. Steve? I would suggest you do some temporary signage and mm -hmm. ride no more than two abreast. Mm -hmm. You know, at several places down Green River Road. Sure. Because that, I mean, people are talking and they don't even realize what they're doing. And all exactly. of a sudden, you come around yeah. the corner, there's four bikes. You can't even stop fast enough. So yep. I think some signage that's temporary. And please, don't ride on the tree. I know you don't, but there was an event last year that rode on the rocks, rode on the trees, put their mile markers on the trees, put their orange mile markers on the rocks. So some temporary signage so that says ride two abreast would be helpful, I think. Okay. And, and the date of this, again, is? Um, it's the 18th of August. Double check my calendar. It's the Saturday. But Okay, so generally speaking, so um, it might be worth having some publicity in Guilford also that says just if you know there's going to be a bike route a bike race on this route if you're concerned about getting someplace fast you might want to look for an alternate way to drive around okay so I mean, honestly the you know we try to talk to people who are most impacted like the postman you know we always give him a heads up to <laughs> get the route done before 10 yeah. o'clock in the morning um, on saturday we just, have just like a, a green river you have a green river, river uh, green river listserv right that you might be able to to send out an announcement to, to some degree, yeah. Between yeah. Gabby and myself, we could probably get the word out. Yeah, the, the so that's Green River. I don't know if there's any other. Do you have a contact info? Yeah, can it be put on the web, okay. the town web? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, don't, I mean, it would be better to oh, be on Facebook and the rec thing and, and, and um, oh, you know, and front also porch the forum front porch forum. Yeah, yeah, I think, but um, I think just to let the the re the area, the residential area know where people, those people. Just to remind them that this is going to take place. You probably have a map of the route too, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. could be published. I mean, is there? I mean, other than I didn't get your name, sir. Steve. Steve. I mean, are there other points of contact? 
Highway department, police department. Police yes, department. Sorry, you don't have a highway. So that was my. Are, are you, do you do you contact like mutual aid and our fire department and like the yeah, sheriff, so, so everybody knows in this area that it's going like have, what their access points are. And I think it's usually select board, uh, director of public safety, and police department, and it's usually like January, May, and July that we send out reminders that the event's going on. Um, Again, I'm never quite sure. Like some of your emergency services come out of Wilmington. Is that correct? No. 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 Okay. Brattleboro. Okay. I, mean, I feel. I feel like there was a couple emergency responses on Deer Park, though, that actually came out of Wilmington, and they complained once to us. Maybe other. I, I don't know how they dispatched. Yeah. Um, but we can all have it from Leiden, from Massachusetts, from you know, okay. and usually from Brattleboro. So, but okay. that'll depend on how they dispatch. I don't know how that works. But I'd also say the cover bridge gets really jammed up like the day before and the day of. And I would just suggest making everything so you don't have to so cross the streets, you know, jam up the streets so that emergency vehicles can get through if, right. if they were to need to. Right. Mary also told me that two of our firefighters volunteered with you guys as EMTs last year. I mean, I know Evan Quinn was up there. Okay. I've known him. Yeah. He's been a biker for years. I forget who the other gentleman was. Uh, I don't remember who she told me who it was. Okay. Moment. But yes, there, were, there was Bevan and one other person. Yeah, I and mean, usually Bevan and his assistant are right there at the uh, the covered bridge. But we usually, we usually station one or two emergency vehicles at the top of Deer Park there as well. It sounds like a great event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's, it's a lot of fun. We didn't think we were going to you know, get large, but I mean, we had um, we had a full color eight page spread in Bicycling Magazine a couple years ago. And there's like a picture of you know, a couple people swimming in front of Addison's house. And like Good it. day for kids to set up lemonade stands. Yeah. There you go, right? <laughs> you know, how can the town Stop take advantage of this financially? So right. young entrepreneurs with lemonade. Um, and where does, where does the money get donated to? For what organization? Because it is a Franklin Land Trust. So actually the ride, I mean the cool thing is that it, um, Basically, conserves about an acre of farmland every year for each rider. Wow. So oh, around, around 1,500 acres a year right now are getting funded by the ride. And do you use any local vendors when you have your event up here? Um, we had talked with the country store about doing some catering. Mm -hmm. um, and forgetting, it's Chunks of Energy. I think he's is he based up here. He makes, he makes energy bars somewhere in town. Owl? Owl well, Energy. Okay. I think there's Owl. I don't know of any other. Um, I want to say, but I'm forgetting. I'm not the person who does a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the concessions. I mean, it's certainly you know in, in the Deerfield Greenfield area, a lot of the local guys mm -hmm. get into it between Real Pickles, you know, People's Pint, Hillside Pizza. I don't know, you know, how much the uh, the local vendors here are engaged right now. Mm -hmm. I think what, what Gabby is suggesting it would it would be appreciated if local vendors were you know were invited to participate in this. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, any more questions? Thank you so much for yeah. all My of that pleasure. information. Um, you know, uh, Mary again is sick, but if you guys have other questions, <coughs> email her. Um, you know, depending on the type of question, it might get to my desk or whoever. But by all means, let us know what we can do. Okay. Thank right. you for coming. Thank, Thank you. Right. You betcha. Have a good, good time, night. everyone. Yeah. And then I'll also have to hear from you through uh, yeah, Addison. Yeah. Or, okay. Thank you. So um, the next thing on our agenda is the the solar development on Kirchheimer Drive, and um, the it's first Tammy Sargent and her most of the residents here, and then Peter Thorell. Um, so I I wanted to um, preface this by saying that we are not a judicial board. We are here to understand the situation and to listen to the request. Um, and um, I had said to Tammy that I would take the information that I got from the, the group at the Planning Commission meeting and present it briefly. Um, and then, um, and then uh, Peter, you wanted some time. And then I, and then you were, or I could say what you it was that you had wanted from the select board, and then we could deliberate. And I would like to keep this discussion um, brief and efficient. So, so I, th um, so the select board has seen, but I will say for everybody else, the um, notes from the Guilford Planning Commission. And I'm just going to summarize these briefly. That um, 
Um, the group of residents met um, with, the, with the Planning Commission on the April 30th meeting um, to talk about their concerns about the Kirchheimer Drive solar project at 159 Kirchheimer Drive. I, am I saying that right? Kirchheimer? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, the solar project is owned, um, I believe it's still owned by Sovereign Solar, and it was originally um, developed by Peter Thorell of Sovereign Solar. Um, Abutting landowners brought up many issues associated with the development, which include um, some were not notified of the in original installation. Uh, those that were notified were not given information on how to cont contest the installation. Uh, no abutting landowners were notified when the installation, the location of the installation was changed from the top part of the field to the middle of the field. Um, uh, the abutting landowners did not comment um, to a 45-day notice sent to the Guilford Planning Commission on May 27, 2015, um, because they did not receive the letter. Um, uh, they say they consider the new location of the panels to be an eyesore, um, and that the installation is much larger than what was proposed. Landowners were told to expect about 2,000 panels, but more than 2,600 have been installed. Um, they, I believe they, we were told that the panels, the area around the panels would be brush hogged once a year. This has not happened. Um, and uh, since the project was installed, the um, an amount of wildlife that was seen in the area has diminished greatly. Um, and the sort of summary feeling was that the landowners that felt that the project, develop, develop, project developer had not proceeded with integrity to the required project development process and to the stated project development process. Um, in April of 24th of 2018, from Sovereign Solar, there was, a, there was a letter from Sovereign Solar noting that a 45-day advance notice had been for provided to give all the interested parties notice that Sovereign Solar intends to file an 8010 application to request an after-the-fact amendment to the project based on the location change. So that means that the their notice would be official as of, sorry, the application would be official as, as of June 7th. Um, the abutting landowners, the town of Guilford and others, have an opportunity to provide commentary during this time. Um, all neighbors noted that they are not against solar panels in that field, but they have significant issues with the placement of the panels, the upkeep of the site, and the communication about the project. Um, and then I, we have the PUC, Public Utilities Commission, um, order saying that if Sovereign wishes to retain its Certificate of Public Good, it must petition for an amendment and show that the as-built project remains in the public good. And that is what I understand this 45-day petition to be. Um, and therefore, the, the Public Utilities Commission ordered Sovereign to file a request for a major amendment using the procedural requirements for an application in the ruling, blah, blah. And um, so that, I think, is the pretty much the basics of the situation. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Do you can, can we just clarify that? Because we got piecemeal documents, and because it spans over several, you know, like three years, yeah. it was a little bit confusing for, at least for me, to it figure out. It's like testimony, a piece of this, a piece of an order. But what, and maybe <coughs> you, know, you could just nod your head or something. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, it seems in 2015 there was an application under, was it 248? Yeah. yeah, he's saying yes in the back there. So, <laughs> um, for whatever reason, there was some sort of mishap with the notice, and not everyone received a notice at that time, right? For whatever reason, I don't know who's to blame. It doesn't really matter at this point, right? No. Then it seems like the the siding changed due to uh, wetlands. like wetlands, right? Not really. Okay. Well, so it changed. We'll just put it, it that changed. way. <laughs> exactly. It changed. Um, they didn't notify everyone, so now they're going back doing their 45-day notice of an amendment for signing. Is everyone sort of in agreement with that? I have a question about yeah. that, though. The amendment, the amendment would amend 
where the the original location to the new location, which would allow it to be legal? That's my understanding. I mean, I didn't have the sighting map, so it wasn't clear. I mean, but it seemed, does everyone so, agree that, sir, he, that <clears throat> Sovereign is now saying, hey, I put it here. I want an amendment after the fact to put it where I put it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So everyone's in agreement. Cool. And so now there was an actual 45 day notice, so there's a comment period. Correct? That'll end in June 7th. And, and is this a comment period to the pub public utilities? Yes. PUC. 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 Formerly um, known as the PSB. Yeah. Can I just add the 45 day advance notice puts people on notice that we are going to file a petition for a certificate of public good or for an amendment of the certificate of public, public good. At that point, there will be time for people to make comments. I guess they could make comments now, but normally it's to let you warm up and know that it's coming so that you don't feel constrained when you only have a 21-day comment period when the Certificate of Public Good application gets filed. Right, and I think the Regional Commission will usually comment during the 45, like after yeah. we get the 45-day notice, right? Usually so, so comments come after the certificate is filed and not during the 45-day advance notice period in my experience in the past. Yeah, and it's weird because the world has changed recently too. Yeah, lots so. of changes. You may file inquiries or complaints, comments with the applicant about the project and you will also have an opportunity to file comments with the commissions once the application is filed. So what is the role of the select board? I mean, is there any act? I'm, I'm not saying that we, I don't, so, I don't want to legislate that now, but what is, the, what is the role of the select board in this whole process because I don't I'm not aware of any action that the select board can take in this So the select board can take an interested party or can comment on the application um, but we're not adjudicating it right, at okay. all. Um, and the, what, that's what the planning commission did. They took a position saying that they were in favor of revoking the certificate of public good. So it becomes Who's part of the that? public comment. Our comment yes. becomes part of the yes. public comment. So I'm sorry, so Peter the planning commission took the position that they want to revoke the um they are drafting a letter um how can they do that they heard this the group of citizens and they would say there i think their um letters it's not actually been draft i haven't seen a draft of the letter yet but the motion of the planning commission was to draft a letter um in support of the request to revoke the um, certificate of public good we spent an hour talking about this on the 30th. And so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in shock that the public, that the planning commission would take a decision only hearing one side of the story. Don't you all always hear both sides of a story before making so a decision? So we were listening, and I mean, not we, the planning commission, and tonight the this group brought a request to, to uh, make their case before the select board and to ask for the support of the select board. Um, we're not in a position to judge the merits of, I don't know, I mean. So we are able to comment, we're as an interested yeah. party as the town. Right. Okay. Right. That's a, a point of and we've never done that in the past, let's right. just make that comment. And what does revocation mean? Does it mean that, uh, what would revocation mean if it were re re revoked? Does, um, that, the pen, so that the site has to come down? Um, Actually, it doesn't, it's unprecedented, we don't know. This is a project that's already been built, it's been connected to the grid, it's been providing power for over two years. Their objection didn't come until after it was completely built and established. But my understanding of the law is that what would be revoked would be the certificate of public good. Yeah. They don't agree. And they would have to somehow find that it's no longer, it does not continue to be in the public, in the public interest. And if they did, they would take away our right to connect the field to the grid. I get it. In other words, the connection, the mm -hmm. net metered connection to Green Mountain Power is what they're adjudicating, whether we have the right to make that, con to, to maintain the connection that's been there for two years. Or I guess he could change it back to the original place. So, yeah. Yeah, but well that's what I was yeah. just I mean, I, that's, I guess, well, the other option. Mm -hmm. Whether yeah, that's feasible or not, I don't know. But I think it might be helpful if we could sort of see the site and then hear about what the concerns we have are? The, we have the maps in the folder too, I think. The reason why, um, one of the main reasons why I came was to ask you guys to also do that, make a comment to the Public Utility Commission about this, because we <clears throat> lost our rights 
it, we didn't have a voice in this at all. So once this got put through, once this was built, now it's like, let's just allow it to be there and other people look at it and go, well, I don't have to look at it, it's not that bad. But that's not what this is about. <clears throat> Rules are put in place for everything, for Act 250, for you name it. If we had zoning, we would have to follow the rules and there would be a penalty if you didn't. The rules were not followed on this. We were not notified. <coughs> There was one person who was taking in, taken into consideration as far as having to look at it. So many meetings took place between that one person and Sovereign Solar and none of the rest of the abutting landowners were included in that saying, hey, here's, here's a thought. It keeps getting blamed that it was A&R that's caused this and it's not the Agency of Natural Resources. They said, this area, you can't put it in. They didn't say it has to go over there. They just said you have to stay out of this area. That's all they're saying. So for him to say that it's because of A&R is not true. It was because of one abutting landowner that didn't want to look at it. Mm -hmm. And this solar field in the amendment says it's only been moved 100 feet, about 100 feet. Mm -hmm. It has been moved hundreds of feet. And it is much larger than he told us it would be. It's 23 racks wide. A rack of solar panels is over 22 feet wide. There are 23 racks wide, but originally we were told there were gonna be 13 racks wide. They were only gonna be 13 and a half foot inner row spacing. These are 25, 26 feet, double of what we were told. The, we lost our voice, and I don't think it's in the best interest of the town or anyone to say it's okay for certain people because they're solar to not have to follow the rules. Everyone should have to follow the rules and we should all be held. Do more, are more people seeing it now than, than what originally? So there was one person who, it was an aesthetic problem with for now. One person. For one person. And right, now, but now before. But now yes. there's more of you are seeing it and you right. don't want to see it. Exactly. I think that's true. There's only one other who can see it from the residents. Mr. John Jules. Actually, no. <coughs> built, can see it from her house. My mother well. can see it from her house. Right out of her living room window, she can see so it. But I, that's besides the point. That's beside the point. My Good. point is the rules are in place. They were not followed. Multiple and times. Multiple times. All of the information is available to anyone who wants it. Mm -hmm. I know you only want us to use five minutes of the, your time. There's a ton of information. Nick John Jules and I have been dealing with this for almost two years. And we're to the point now where the Public Utility Commission said, all right, we're gonna fine him for not following the rules. We're gonna fine him for moving it without telling us here we're gonna move it. But we're also gonna make him reapply for that CPG with this major amendment. Basically, he's starting over. So you almost have to put in your mind that this solar thing doesn't even exist. If he were to have approached us, with the this is what I want to do, would we have all been accepting of it? Just because it's there doesn't mean we should be accepting of it. It's not fair. Thank you, Tim. Thank Peter, you. did you want to say something? Yeah, um, I do. Um, I wish I was as smart as Dan Engel, who built another solar project here along Guilford Center Road, because he did that a year and a half after we did, but he knew to invite all the abutters to a meeting beforehand and talk to find out if they had any considerations. We didn't know that. We sent out a 45-day advance notice of that project. One of the abutters who received it contacted us and said, you put the panels in a place in the field where I can see them and I would like to not see them. Can you move it so that we won't see them? None of the other abutters contacted us. We didn't know that Tammy, no, she did receive the 45-day advance notice. She said she got that. She didn't receive the CPG application. So we changed the position to satisfy um, Mrs. Krakmalny so that she couldn't see it. And we put it in a place where there was a wet spot in the field, about 10 feet wide and 20 feet long, much smaller than the definition of a wetland. A&R came in and had us hire a wetland consultant to test the soils around the wet spot 
and found that there were hydric soils in an area of seven tenths of an acre. And they therefore defined the wet spot as a wetland and said, you can't put the solar farm there, you have to move it. So we moved it to the next closest place that it could be built and meet ANR's requirement that we not put it in the wetland. So I agree, the first move was mm -hmm. to meet the requirement, the wish of an abutter. We didn't have to do that. We could have built it in the first place because there's a distinction that I think is important to be made here. And the distinction is between the public good and the private good. And what we have here is an objection of a couple of private landowners. And the Public Service Board's job is to determine whether this project is in the public good. And they've noted that the project where it is have no public views at all. Unlike Dan Ingalls project, which you can see driving down Guilford Center Road, you can't see this project from anywhere, except I thought, the only one we've heard, is when the leaves are off, Mr. Jim Julius can see it from his porch and no, from his driver. We can see it as well. Okay, you can Period. see it as well. Absolutely. Okay. We have so to show you pictures. The point is the public service board <laughs> said that we did submit the notices that were necessary, but they said that when we moved it the first time, we should have submitted a new forty five day advance notice. My lawyer didn't even think that that was the right reading, but different people disagreed and the Public Service Board said you should have done that. And they slapped us on the hand for it. And then when we moved it to satisfy a and they slapped us again for not coming back and asking them before we moved it, even though the CPG told us to do what a and told us to do. So, but the point is now, the Public Service Board, that's actually called the Public Utilities Commission, has decided that we need to reapply to give the abutters the opportunity to object to the project just the way they would have if we had just started. And we're facing that process. But what I hear today is that for some reason the Planning Board has, is going to write a letter saying that this should be um, rescinded. And the planning board's job is to decide what is in the public good, not what is in the interest of a couple of local landowners. This project pays taxes to the town of Guilford. This project provides the electricity, provides renewable energy for all of the Vermont State Employees Credit Union branches all over the state. There's 62,000 members of the credit union who benefit from having this project there. Will Jonas benefits from having the project there because he gets significantly more income from the project than he did from the organic hay that he had grown on site. So the town benefits from it. The state has already decided that it's in the public good that we promote renewable energy. So the question that's left is, is this project aesthetically offensive to the general public? I think that's the one question. of the questions, Nick, what? but I, I think the other two questions are the size is different. The, it's not the actually, aesthetics, the size, and the placement, okay. and the maintenance okay. are the, the, okay. the four so issues that I hear. Four issues. But three of those issues are about the project before. We're starting de novo. They have an opportunity to come in and say, the size of the project will be the project size as we apply for it this time. They're wrong when they say that this project was different size than we applied. We've shown all of the application, all of the number of things. It's exactly the size that we said it was going to be. It certainly is in a different layout. We had it in a different layout and we had to change the shape and the nature of it to fit it around the wetland. So it does have rows of panels that are longer than they were before, but that was all included in this application. So. Your job, as far as I know, that's what I came here to find out. Yeah. I was going to say, how far away from the original site, taking into account the consideration to the area of the wetlands and then moving it again, okay. is it from the original placement? So, Would you guess? I, I don't have to. I can tell you pretty accurately, but we have to decide what we mean by original. For me, original was the CPG application, which was the second. We applied for the CPG in the second location and received a certificate of public good there. And we've moved it about 100 feet south from where the CPG application um, 
set the southern boundary, it might be 140 feet. So the difference might be where the original CPG application was approved for to it, some of the people in the room. It might be, but again, we have to be. I, I'm, I'm just no, asking. There uh, was no CPG application oh, at the first at I, the first site. The CPG application was for the second site, and that CPG was granted. Okay. But the Public Service Board felt that they didn't have the proper opportunity to object, mm -hmm. and so they asked us to open the proceedings to give them that opportunity to object. Mm -hmm. But I don't think. It makes it, it stands up to something that the planning commission or the select board should object to because your job is to discern what's in the public good, not what's in the interest of one or two abutting landowners. Although the public service board will take that into consideration. Thank you, Peter. Gabby, I just want to see because it looks like. The sergeant is it yeah. has a actual so what I'd like to say I don't think it matters necessarily I think from what I'm hearing from you guys originally or not originally yeah. can we look at the site now and can you tell me specifically if I don't know if you're the representative yeah. for all of the neighbors or if you could just sort of speak together to this um, but to, to tell us what your actual concerns about the current site are okay this I think is probably the most helpful which is the map of the property this is the entire field Richard, if you can so, hold it up, and then that could be on the sorry on the camera too. So this is the field, and this is where they put the solar. But if we were allowed to participate in this from the beginning, had we known we were allowed to, we would have said, "Why are you taking space out of the land use, out of this gorgeous field that all of us love the view on? Why couldn't it go in the 11 plus acres up top where no one would see it? Because this is also." the same property as 159 Kersheimer Drive. So there is over 11 acres at the top with a little rental property, so it would only be his tenant that would ever see the solar if they had placed it there and if we had had that opportunity. So that's why I'm not, I don't want to split hairs with, okay, he, he moved at 400 feet, not 100 feet. That's beside the point. At the very beginning, if we had been allowed to participate we would have said, why would you take, because our town plan, and that's one of the reasons why they're going to write a letter, is to preserve agricultural land. And that's exactly what that was until they put that in the middle of it. That easily would fit on an 11 and a half acre parcel of property, and no one would look at it, and no one would complain, and no one would care. So well, you, get, you never got a letter? Uh, see, the letter we received was showing it at the very top of the But you field. did get a letter that said this is open for comment, right? No, it did not say oh. that. And there is, and, and he said that the Public Utility Commission is, said that he didn't do anything wrong in that regard, but he did. There's documents on it, and we don't have time to get into it, but I can get all of that available to you. No, no I mean, what I really want to, I mean, I... I don't think you could say, hey, I'm a private somebody else's property. Here's where I want you to put the solar. What I want to find out is what is your, what are the specific issues with this placement right here that are giving you concerns that you would want to have altered, that you say, here's the problems. What, one of my biggest problems is my hunting blind is right there, and now I can't shoot anywhere in that direction because all I see is solar, solid solar. And i got to be honest, even if Nick Jules was the only one who has to look at this, it's not fair. He... He had his beautiful view, and the value of his property diminished greatly by 23, I mean, it's like 600 feet wide of solar. And with when he came and talked to you guys about this in June of 2015, it was at the top of the field, and he said he was going to mow under it once a year. But now, the, the racks are so tall, they're like 15 feet in the air, they look like billboards, they're so tall. Because when he applied for the application through the service board, he said, mowing won't be necessary. I'm going to have the racks high enough to where we won't have to worry about mowing. The only time we get to worry about it is if anything grows tall enough to shade it. That's not, so not at all what he told you guys. I just think that... So that I'm, sorry, I'm, not, I'm just trying to figure out what the, I mean, I just really want to hone down and figure out what the actual concerns are because that's what the PUC is going you know, to, you It's basically aesthetic. It's aesthetic. It's not just aesthetic. Okay, aesthetic, wildlife. I, I could stand it up very quickly. Mm -hmm. okay. Number one, uh, when, when they had the aesthetics expert on the stand, he said that that affected 
the aesthetics. That's number one. Number two, we went into why we didn't get the notice about rebuttal, you know, telling us what our rights are. If I, when that, when his trucks pulled up, I'm sitting there drinking my coffee and I see trucks coming out down across the field. Maybe if I had had that notice in my hand, I could have walked up and said, hey, you can't do that. But I don't know what the notice said. He never said notices to anybody. And to me, as far as I'm concerned, that was a break in the law. Because the law stipulated he was supposed to send this. Now, if you break the law, huh, I'll let you people decide. So, again, so I, I just want to, I mean, because you talk about wildlife. It looks like aesthetics is the biggest concern that you guys well, have. Well, aesthetics, I, 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 I mean, I, aside from the distrust that's clearly been I, going on for the past couple of years. I don't even have a mouse running around. The deer are gone. The turkeys that used to trot down the hill are gone. All the coonie rabbits are gone. So I'm surprised I still have the birds. Did you look at the ANR map? Was it a deer wintering habitat? Or is there some sort of corridor protection for animals? Like, is that a corridor they travel? Is there any information about that? <clears throat> I have 15 acres. And that acreage, I enjoyed seeing the animals. Not there. Hold on. Now, if he... Well, I'm not going to go any further. I think so I said enough. I'm but hearing... You, 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 got my, you got the gist of my point. I'm hearing size, placement, aesthetics, maintenance, and well, compliance like, with regulations. Yeah, and again, as Tammy said, there's 11 acres at the other side. Nobody can see. Okay. That's the difference. Steve? Did the original CPG come before this board? Um, it absolutely it, it, it did. did. Yeah. So did it come with? Did it oh, come? Sorry. Did it come with site plans and mm -hmm. terms and conditions and everything? And you know, uh, we don't do the terms and conditions, right? So we can just comment, and it's the PUC that does all of that. But we had site plans. So the original, we, in 2015, I think, is the, the oh, yeah, documentation back, yeah. that we had. Yeah. yeah. So, but we don't, we don't put any comments on it at that time. But you might take into consideration what you got to this board, directly sent to this board with the stipulation. Right. Well, again, I don't think we got anything. I mean, that's sort of where I'm confused about, like, did we get the 45-day advance notice with site plans or anything? We did. We, I, I was able to locate a couple of documents <coughs> just that this was happening I, no, in, I mean, like in this our one. file. This, this one, one, it came last week. Because I didn't it's see that. 20, it's in the folder. It's in the meetings folder. It's a, no. it's a letter dated the 24th of April. Do From this year? Do they have the opportunity? Oh, no. Is that, was that the folder? The 45 day notice. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I don't remember if that was I'm the I'm not sure. I didn't see that, that, but. What letter is that? That's the 45 that is the, day notice. the 45 day notice. That just came up. One minute, Tim. No, my notes are on the back. Gabby. <laughs> I mean, I don't see how we, I mean, here's my issue. I don't see how we can comment without, like, a site plan. I mean, if we're doing this all de novo, and we're doing it like we'd normally do it. There you go. That's, that's the as-built site plan. She's got it. Is it the same as the as-proposed site plan? No. No, it's that's I mean, and honestly, it doesn't matter. It does, it's a moot point. Because what we need to look at now is what if they're doing a new. That's what that's what you guys received, and that's what he spoke with you about, June twenty second of two thousand fifteen. All of this discussion about what was planned and what is there is irrelevant. It's already been decided by the Public Service Board. Now we have a so new application right. in the new position. And all the discussion about whether we didn't send notices two years ago properly or not has been adjudicated. It's not left for anybody to decide that. What's left to decide is whether the project in the new position continues to be in the public good. That's not the only question that's left. Not when you broke the law. Can I'm you, sorry. Uh, I've already been tried for that. Okay, both, everybody sit down, please. Tammy? Yeah. Your turn. I was going to, can I read? Okay. I was trying to grab the paper. Um, I was just trying to point out that he said the footprint is the same, just change shape. Um, but it's not the same. When he spoke with you guys, I don't know if anyone got to watch the um, select board meeting that was aired June 22nd, 2015.
he was asked how many solar panels would there be and he said less than 2,000. So then he sent in his application for the CPG. This is the one that none of us received and that one had 2,496 panels. The panels are three foot by five foot. They're not small. What he actually so what? built has 2,592 panels. There, there's big difference in numbers between less than 2,000 panels to almost 2,600 panels is a big difference. That is not the same footprint. I just wanted to be able to point that out. Gabby, and so would you have an issue if they had 2,000? I mean, I'm just trying to figure I out don't what we're if, if what, in the top of the field, what you're looking for. Where it's not, what I'm looking for is the select board to contact the Public Utility Commission saying we are not okay with the way this business has been handled. This is, we are, our town plan is to preserve agricultural land. There is enough land owned by this landowner to house that solar array so that none of us see it. They could still have the solar and we would still have the beautiful field. It wouldn't affect the agricultural land in our town. I mean, to me, that's a win-win. I'd like to see him pop it out of there and throw it up on the top. I mean, here's, I mean, here's the issue I always struggle with agricultural land is it, preserve agricultural land, meet our requirements for renewable energy, which is a state and local and town goal, right. mm -hmm. regional goal, yeah. and how do you always balance those, right? I mean, that's really the struggle for me because right. what, what's better? And what's better for the but, landowner that might well, not be able to the, pay for his taxes using It's also the issue taxes. of the public good over, over, I mean, that seems to me to be the argument. I mean, what is public and what is private? You, I understand that I probably wouldn't want that in my, I wouldn't want to be looking at that. But on the other hand, there's the public good, which is that there are more people, thousands of more people, who are benefiting from those panels. But they could benefit from those panels Up there. <laughs> at the top, where, it, you know, but that was not... Okay. Right, and the issue now is that we don't, it, this is after the fact, right? So you usually talk to the right. advisors and you try and make it work. Can I, again, I want to ask your opinion on this. this. Did you read this part of this document that's <coughs> page 30 of the I have no idea. You know, I have no idea. It's always hard to tell when you have one page out of a multi-page well, that's, that's the only one that we have. So, um, But I just wondered, it seems to me that the question is not that the project is different from the original design. No, I think the issue, and everyone agrees, is that it's like a whole new application. Yeah. It's de novo. It's like it never happened. The only problem is that it's actually in the It's there. And that is sort of there's the rub. So, so everyone gets to comment. Everybody has their notice. You know, he was spanked for doing something wrong. Everyone's sort of on new, even playing ground now. Right. Essentially, it's what the PUC was trying to do. Even, you know, no one can be made whole at this point, but that's what the PUC was at least trying to do. But their argument also includes the fact, which I'm not sure it's relevant, uh, is that something illegal happened, which created this. I mean, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Exactly. Right, but that's, I mean, but the problem is that doesn't play into the... That's correct. I agree. But it doesn't it, play into the analysis now, yeah. unfortunately. So, if I could just say once again, the word illegal is very strong in this case. It's an interpretation of whether another 45-day notice was necessary right. and different people disagreed about it. They're saying that they didn't get the notice, but other neighbors did get the notice and they're on our mailing list. So there's no proof that we didn't send it to them. They don't have any way to prove it. We don't have any way to prove they didn't, but we do have the mailing list that we send it to and the people who received it. So. I object to having that be called us doing something illegal. And right, and I was I was not speaking it for myself. Sent, it should have been sent certified. So hold on. That's so I mean, so, yeah, so it's sorry. really irrelevant. I mean, not an argument between. Yeah, <laughs> but I would also say that that at this point, I think we all need to sit there and say, okay, that's in the past. Yeah. Doesn't mean it was right. Doesn't mean it was wrong. But we, how do you move forward given the situation now? So have you talked to Sovereign? I mean, has there has Sovereign called a meeting and said, hey, we have all these angry abutters. Let's have, see if we can c 
come to some sort of compromise? I mean, we, we, or at least talk through hang it. Hang on, Peter, if there's any, okay, if there's sure. any yeah. um, way to make all of the abutters happy. I imagine that's a very tall task, especially with the distrust that's involved now. But has there been any effort to talk or? We had a whole. Peter, you can answer first and then Tammy. Oh, sorry. You can, you, your turn, Peter. Um, we had a whole workshop at the Public Utility Commission offices designed to see if there was a way to solve this issue. And Tammy and Nick insisted that the only resolution that they would accept was the complete removal of the array, which would, it's a two and a half million dollar project they're talking about. This is not like something that we can go pick up and put somewhere else. It has underground electric feeds to it, it has a transformer that's set. This is not financially practical. It would bankrupt us to move this project. So their solution, which was the only one they would accept and talked about, wasn't acceptable to us. We talked about planting trees, we talked about buffering the situation so they wouldn't see it. None of that was acceptable. So here we are with the situation where they'll come in front of the Public Service Board and they'll get to object on the basis of aesthetics and the Public Service Board will decide. But if the town of Guilford were to write a letter saying that they agree it's not in the public good, that would weigh very heavily in this case. And you'd have to explain why this project is less in the public good than Dan Ingalls' project, than the other 500 kilowatt project that you have in Guilford. Um, and I haven't heard anything that says that it's not in the public good. Has an aesthetic study been done by an expert? Yeah. And After the fact, while we were doing the hearing, it was done. It wasn't done prior to the project. That's okay. What was the result? He said that it was a very well-cited project. That's not what he said. And that's what I was raising my hand. There is a lot of, we could sit here and argue back and forth, and I don't want to do that. There is so much information that is through the Public Utility Commission that you guys can read the evidence. You guys can read any, and I can help direct you to what it is you're looking for so that you're not sitting here having to listen to us bicker back and forth because there's still non-truths yeah, that are going to confuse the... Mm -hmm. So we've kind of run out of our time. Plus, um, and well, I'd like to speak... Well, on sorry, you, you may. Um, just a couple of points. Um, I haven't noticed any significant difference in the wildlife. I still have deer, rabbits, um, haven't seen that many turkeys, but turkeys have been up and down uh, in the past few years. I would say that as far as I can make out, the original location would have been seen from Jinjula's uh, home as sighted if it were if it had been sighted there originally <coughs> it's not available it's it's closer by much more visible pardon me it's much more visible much more visible that's, that's, being, that's, that's being a fact. closer being closer i can see that that is a point um, however when the, i believe and i could be wrong that there's been clearing between his house and the field, which has occurred during and perhaps also before, but primarily during this time period of when the solar field was built. So that his clearing of trees has made the view to the field that much more available to him. One more comment. Okay. Okay. That's not true. We were clearing because we wanted to see the field. And then when this nonsense started, we stopped clearing. So you're, that's, that's in timing. Um, so it seems to me that, mm, Gabby, you're going to have to help me out here. I think that um, we have a group of citizens who have some pretty serious concerns that I think probably it would be good if the select board asked the PUC to listen to these concerns and to try to weigh them against what you're describing as the public good. I don't know exactly how to phrase that, but um, I think you know we can't dismiss the concerns out of hand, nor can we dismiss the, the greater good issue either. So, I don't, so I, I'm trying to figure out how we would balance those two. 
I'm, I mean, I personally don't, don't want to, I don't think I have enough information to weigh either way. Um, and I don't think that we're going to make a decision tonight, tonight uh, on this. I think that the select board needs to come together and as a board and discuss it further. Don't you? That's what we're here for. I mean, because I'd like to look at the town plan in more depth, uh, because really that's our guiding document for what the town-wide and what we need to be thinking about as town-wide. I don't know about the, the greater good thing, but I think we're, we need to look at it from a town-wide perspective. How does this affect our town and what has the town been telling us in particular with the town plan and in light of the new energy referendum that mm -hmm. was passed at town meeting. That to me seems and the like energy the plan. which but that's not passed yet, no. right? Uh, no. no. So we have to go with what was actually a uh, yeah, a out a pointed a shoot voted on by the town. Yeah. So those to me are the two best indicators of what the, the town um, the town's good is. And I'd like to think about that more and look at the aesthetic experts report. It seems like there's concerns about wildlife that I can't seem to get a, uh, get some fact from like an ANR map or something some some factual evidence that shows that it seems anecdotal it may or may not be true I you know I don't I don't have the expertise or knowledge to know that um, so I would like more time to think about it and bet and look more okay. deeply into it let me um, let me entertain two more comments Steve one quick thing I think it's important for the for this board to understand whether you received all the documentation that you should have received on a timely fashion. Because if you did, that's one thing. If you didn't, it might indicate a pattern of, of neglect or something else. But I think from your point of view, I would be really interested, and from a resident's point of view that doesn't have a dog in this fight, uh, is to say, did, you, did this board receive what you were supposed to receive on a timely basis? And if not, why not? Then, well, and I'd just like to reiterate uh, Peter's point that um, I think the Planning Commission, if they were to comment about this, ought to consider uh, interviewing other people than the complainants. Okay. So there is a meeting next week of the Planning Commission if you want to contact them on the 21st, I think. So, um, so I'm, I'm hearing that people would like to um, get more information, have more time to study this, and we'll put it back on the agenda on May 30th. Does that seem like the right thing? Everything? Okay. Well, um, thank you everybody for coming. And just, just bear in mind that uh, that 45 day notice has to be responded to by the 29th. I think no, Peter's seven. comment was we can respond before, but we have 45 days from. Um, May seventh, uh, June seventh. We only 7th. have twenty one days after June. After well, actually, after we submit the CPG, we have one hundred and eighty days to submit oh, the CPG. Okay. But once you submit it, you'll only have twenty one days. Oh, okay. Additional. Thank you. That's the new rule. Uh, it doesn't think, say the time I think we just need to research it. It's more yeah. reason to just, but I think we'll be in time no matter for the 45-day yeah. notice or for the time for the um, time period after the application comes mm -hmm. in. I mean, just I haven't weighed in on this yet, but I do feel as if it's a cautionary tale for all of us about um, neighborly relations in terms of doing business. And also it's uh, uh, the fact that the town has rejected any kind of regulation or zoning means that there's a kind of freewheeling um, uh, procedure that leads to harm done with nobody having bad intentions and I think that's too bad. Thank you, Brenda. I agree. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And weigh in on the energy plan if it's pending, if you have strong feelings, because there's no citing in that. So if you have, if you have feelings about it, go talk to the Planning Commission about what's in draft. Because they really want public input. Tough to turn around. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Thank everybody. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We'll get them later. Thank you. I'll be out. Check on your I can't What did he say? <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So um, on to another source of potential uh, noise in the community is the, the question about whether we have any input on the helipad VSA 207. I mean, I, I, I don't think that's relevant for our town. We don't have zoning, so I don't know. You know that's the way I felt to me, about it's, it. Yeah. I agree. It's not, you know, the only thing we could do about it is when we amend the town plan, be cognizant of it in our transportation portion. I think this was, like, when I talked to someone who was on the state board, they said, well, it was really because they're seeing more come through, but it tends to be more in either cities or second mm -hmm. homes, right? So this was just to let, you know, put it on people's radar and I think it makes sense if there's zoning or something like that but I don't see what we can actively do it aside from amend our town plan right like saying that there shall be no kilo pads in the town of Guilford I mean, even that just the town plan it's not yeah it's a suggestion anybody else wish to comment I have no, I nothing agree. to say about the kilo pad I felt like it really wasn't relevant to the town I either I think we all agree so, we're okay, all in fine. agreement moving on what um, the next item on the agenda is um, the social media no, policy. Yeah. Oh, the health officer. The health officer. Sorry. Okay. So, Peter, I think this one is over to you. <coughs> um, so, uh, Richard Davis has been the town health officer, most people know, for quite a while. Um, we received notification um, from the State Department of Health Department that um, the term expires on the 27th of this month and they would like uh, a recommendation from the select board regarding someone um, to fill that position. I did reach out to Richard to inquire if he would um, consider uh, being reappointed to that position um, for another three years and he graciously said yes. Oh, oh good. Um, so it is not actually an appointment that the select board makes, but the select board is to make a recommendation to the Department of Health as regarding who they want um, to be considered. And it will be uh, the Vermont Health Officer that will make the actual appointment. Do we need a motion? We do. I so move I that, we, that, that we support the... Um, recommend the to reco the health. Yeah. We recommend to the Health Department that Richard David speak Guilford's, the town of Guilford's Health Officer, for a period of three years. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And I'll Miranda, you seconded. Yeah. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are we all done for, with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, unless, unless yes. you want to talk about Bullet Drive. I'm sorry. I think I already explained myself on that one. Yes, with Lisa? Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Unless you go, I'll stay around if you want me to. I mean, that's no big <laughs> We always want you around, but you don't <laughs> have to. All right, I'll hang around. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, excuse me. We could um, we could consider move moving Bullock Drive yes. before social media. Why if I would hear a motion that we could. I so move. I second that. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. okay. Because social media is mercy. So we had this situation from some months ago about um, the problem with Vermont 911 clarifying and fixing errors in mapping and address numbers. And this relates to four properties on Bullock Drive. Um, and um, I'm just gonna say, to skip to the end because we've heard most of this, um, that the listers, the fire department, the rescue um, teams, and the highway commission, and the conservation commission, as well as the Vermont mapping, mm, who were those? Vermont E911. Vermont E911 people all recommend that we change the numbers of the four residents so that those homes are locatable by distance and location. I'm seeing lots of nods. Um, and I will just say that the pros are that that satisfies all the legal requirements <coughs> and all the access requirements and it saves the class four road. Um, yeah. in case we need to use it in the future um, and that the disadvantage to this solution is that those four families and some businesses that are in those locations have to change their address and this is a great inconvenience to them. Mm -hmm. So, um, is, I would... Do we need a motion? I, we do yes, need a motion to... I'll move 
that we accept the recommendation of all of those uh, parties to um, change the, uh, the, how, the addresses to match the 911 map. Mapping and numbering. Yeah, mapping numbering. and numbering. Gordon, you're seconding. Yep. Is there any more discussion? Steve. I can only say that this, this is not the first time this has been done to people. So, <laughs> right. you know, so it's it's not just right. these, whoever these four people are. There's a long line of us that had to address right. changes. Yes. And well, it's not easy. It's not the first time it happened, and there's a reason for it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A trip to Staples. Danny, did you want to make any comment on this? No, I just hung around here just in case anybody had any questions. So. Okay. Thank you. Now I can go. <laughs> now you can go. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You all have Bye. Bye. Sleep well. Bye. Um, so, I'm uh, sorry, we have a motion. You have a, a motion and, and a second. And a second. And um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, this meeting may not be as well. I thought it was going to be. Hallelujah. So now we're on social media. Now we're going to be on social media. So the, um, the story with the social media draft is that we took the 2016 model that Peter had worked on in the beginning of 2007, end of 2000, beginning end of 16, the 16 beginning, beginning of 2017. 2017, amended it slightly from that amendment to that revision to um, incorporate things that we've learned at both the town fair and the town officers education conferences in the intervening time um, and uh, I then contacted after I made these drafts I then contacted made these revisions VLCT and asked them to review it just one last time and I was told that we would have to pay for this review because they were in the process of revising slightly revising their 2016 draft and so um, in my cons my opinion, I thought we could adopt a social media policy, discuss it, and maybe adopt it, and then review it again and amend it if we need to, based on the, the newest revision whenever VLCT gets that done. But that in the in meantime, we would have something in place um, that would be better than nothing in place. Um, and it would also be less costly for us to just use their revised Can't model point. policy when it finally comes out. Um, and I think Garrett said to me that it wasn't, the, the revisions weren't expected to be that sub. Garrett or Abby? Who's Garrett? Well, I also talked to Abby about this. Okay. So, um, and they weren't expected to be substantial? Not substantial. So um, just more, to, to do some more updating, which I think we can do at any time. So I did send out the draft, right. um, and I don't know if people had questions. I put in some explanatory notes there. I, I did have a question. Um, I, I, if, which, if you'd like to look at it again one more time, but there's a, there's a lack of clarity between the town administrator's responsibility. Sometimes it says the town administrator and the what is it called? The other the the responsible the, entity or something. A, a, a representative. Uh, t yes. The representative authorized for the select. Right, and I think it should be. You should name the na the name of the designee, not not the proper name, but what is that person called? Is that if it's the town administrator who is in that position, then the document should always say the town administrator. Um, I agree with you. However, at this point, we um, we don't know whether we're going to be in a position of wanting to have a representative that the select board would appoint to handle these matters. So this leaves us the flexibility to do one or the other. Um, that um, we may, I mean, this, this could be another part-time job, it could be the job of an intern, it could be the job of a volunteer. Um, I don't know, we, we sort of have to... But, but when an intern, not to interrupt, I apologize, um, if you were to do an internship or something, wouldn't they report through the town administrator? If it was an intern? And I'm just wondering if or we it could, could be an intern who would work with an authorized representative. So I mean, we have a, we have a learning curve to go through here as we start using social media. If we decide we're going to so do it. then you could do it. it. It's just a matter. It's a semantical problem, but it, it it makes it confusing to read. You could we could say the t the designated representative and not put in and not say which is who is the town administrator. I think we need to say who it is because if it's two people, who has the ultimate authority? Yeah. 
What if the responsible entity, whatever they called them, did one thing, but the town administrator did another? Who, I mean, somebody need, it needs to be one person who, like, the buck stops here, and it needs to be the same person all the time. And I think if we're going to amend it anyway, which is kind of responsible for I, And that's where I was going, is you yeah. could always amend it later. We're going to amend change. it anyway, apparently. So, so say the town administrator. Town administrator for now. This is Ian Keel, PCTV cameraman. I have permission to ask a question. Yes, you do, sir. I'm a radical resident, so this doesn't pertain to me. But if the viewers of Guilford residents at home, is there an overarching philosophy of what a social media policy for municipal government would be? Because I have a question which follows that, which is social media fulfills no legal requirements the town has for communication. Is that correct? That's correct. That okay. is correct. I just wanted to know. So it's just this idea of if you were a resident, what what is the overarching philosophy of a social media policy for municipal government? Well, it's it, it, the policy explains it. Oh, the policy okay. is to provide standards and procedures for the appropriate use of social media and email when conducting town business. But so, I don't think it requires us to do anything except to have in place certain things like clarity. You know, everything that's done on the town computers is public. Right. Or you and know, can, if you can search it for stuff. public records, you should know that it can be searched. You don't have privacy if you're working right. on town computers. You can't here use your personal the, email for town I, business. I see. Yeah. So it also is an injury. But it doesn't require us to do anything. Right. And it puts somebody in charge so that there's a responsible person who ultimately is, if, if there were a Facebook page, could deal with a thread or respond. And I think it's a very wise thing to have somebody who is in charge of, that, of this. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you for letting me ask a question. Yeah. So um, basically, the town government site does not allow for two-way interaction. Um, limited social media forums allows for comment on certain topics that are put out, and those comments, that needs to be moderated. And it would be much right. like a select board meeting, that people would be expected to adhere to certain rules of procedure. And that those are laid out in a social media policy. Um, so would it be okay for now to adopt a policy that we put the town administrator in charge of it in the document? Would you like me to make those edits and then present it to you for the next meeting? So that's, I mean, that is a decision to make. I had a couple of other questions in here that I thought we Do you have trouble with that suggestion, by the way? No, I don't. I just, okay. um, I don't want to change Peter's job description right now. That's why And of the it's, I was we're talking about it, the potential as we go through this communications development process in the coming months of this being a very, a much bigger burden. Oh, okay. well, it's not just putting a link up on the website anymore. It is reading, you know, monitoring, you know, making sure that things are there. But, so but isn't that a different decision? It is. That, a I mean, to me, we're not putting a Facebook page up. I'm, I'm no, not no, consenting not. to that. This is just a social media policy that goes in place that sort of governs certain things that are ongoing now. I don't, I mean, I think that do, uh, inter putting, creating a Facebook page or a Twitter or whatever type of other social media aside from our website is a different issue entirely. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, so, yeah, if, yeah. you know, so if, if we, you want to do what you say, which is just have something in place for the time being because people are using computers and have a website, then I think it makes sense to do it now, but shove that dis other yeah. discussion and, off to a different time. And the task is making, you know, is just making sure that the policy is not infringed upon Who, or who's doing follow. that? Right. That, I mean, so, so Peter's doing our one way, our one direction right. website stuff. Peter and the and Ellie. the town clerk Ellie, the town clerk assistant, and I'm just doing stuff. The agenda on front porch form. I'm putting up something on front porch form. I, I think you could do that as a private citizen, but I think that we should just stick to what we've been doing, which is the website, and have Peter's job not change. I agree, and that's the way I guess I feel it's about it. Quo. And once this, if 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 we feel that we have a position that needs to be filled for our social media that the town wants to put a big emphasis behind mm -hmm. in a bigger way than we are currently doing, then I think that's a role and responsibility to be that's laid a out in yeah. the future. So um, I agree with you all. I think that um, the questions that I raised in here have to do with a potential future action, not with our mm -hmm. current social gotcha. media mm -hmm. use. And so I think that we need to leave those questions in to consider as we think about moving forward based on recommendations of the Communications Committee. Um, but um, other than that, I think that the, um, 
you know, that it, it does make sense to the town administrator right now, mm -hmm. to put it that way. Good. Yeah, but um, I also want to be protective yes. of, of Peter's time and when we do have conversations about, you know, broader conversations about communication, you know, <laughs> and, you know, what would truly serve the town. I mean, that's a big conversation and a potentially large um, time commitment from somebody right, if but it's that's not the this. direction we want to go. Yeah, right? and we we're should not just there. be very clear yeah. about that. Yeah. So, no, exactly. so basically, we're keeping it status quo. So right, that Peter's right, time is in exactly. Frenchtown. We're not spending money on getting right. some part-time person. We're mm -hmm. not doing anything. It's not like an that. instrumentation document. It's a policy. It's just like any of the other policies that we have in yeah. place. Oh, so wow. on on page seven of the draft, um, it read the following notification shall be made accessible on all town social media sites and on the town's official website. And I don't know whether people looked at that, but what it reads as. If you believe that any material on the town's official website or town social media site infringes on any copyright which you own or control, or that any link on the town's social media sites directs users to another website that contains material that infringes on any copyright that you own or control, you may file a notification of such infringement with the town administrator. Blah, blah. So I think, um, and what I had wanted was Peter to just note that and put that up on our website um, because I think that's good practice to have up there. Um, so I think does they'll that tell you anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry? But We're going to tell you anyway yeah. if they're really yeah, good. I mean, yeah. Does that redirecting piece have to, those sentences, does that have to be in there? This re, if you're redirected, is that part of the law that you can't? Be redirected. This is in the VLCT. Okay. I didn't make this up. Okay. I would never make it. Like that. Um, so. It's in accordance with federal law. Is it? Okay. That's that stated. satisfies me. Okay. I think you can direct people, but it's, you know, it's you don't want the, the stuff on you. You don't want copyrighted stuff on your website if you didn't get permission for yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be an action on this were we to adopt this policy. So, um, could I entertain a motion to? I move that we adopt the, the social media policy. With the amendments. Okay. With the amendments. With the amendments. Thank you. Um, Gabby, are you seconded? Sure. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Huh. Um, Gabby, Wyndham Regional Update. Sure. So I apologize. I'm sort of doing this off the top of my head because I didn't look at well, this it's agenda until last <laughs> night. So um, just to let you know what's going on. Some of it we've already, like, has already come before the select board as far as the Brownfields project that um, went through the WRC's Brownfields program, uh, the the tactical basin planning that's going to start going on for the next two years. Um, Wyndham Regional Commission is starting a pre-planning process to revise its regional plan. There's no time li limit on, not time, there is a time limit, but it's sort of uh, about two years away or so, we're starting it early. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm about that. We will be adjusting maps and adjusting languages, language in the plan itself. So be on the lookout for that. There'll be a, um, they're still really in the pre-planning stages about how they're gonna go about their outreach. Uh, I'm trying to think, transportation, we did the prioritization, the B-Trans prioritization. Um, a couple of months ago, that's in the meeting minutes if you have any interest. I'm trying to think what other committees I'm on. Uh, project review, we've been going, you know, the project review committee looks at all Act 250 and 248 applications, and if they're of regional significance, can comment on them. Um, we've been seeing a lot of solar, and there is actually a lot of confusion with the changes in the law, so. The changes so, in the law about solar, solar and siting, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's really interesting. So it's not just, it's not, I mean, this was a very case specific situation, but it is, it's, it's an ongoing change with the PUC and how they're dealing with things and mm -hmm. um, the energy plan itself and how you can be compliant with Act 174 or not. Um, and I think that's about it. We got the grants and aid, I think, noticed today. So that'll be ongoing this summer. Uh, Wyndham Regional Commission is really active in, in helping all the towns with their um, with, with their Act 46 compliance. Uh, you learned about the quack, and I think... The quack? The quack. 
<laughs> what is the quack? The Clean Water Advisory oh, Commission. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to live with that name. <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> trying to the embrace quack, it. Quack, quack. Wow. Um, so I, it's watery. It is watery. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's all that's going on. So I have two questions. Well, one question and one comment. Um, I think we were all given an invitation from the Wyndham Regional Commission to read the current plan and comment on it if there were things that we felt we wanted to have um, uh, considered in this in the in the planning process over the next couple of years. So um, I, we did get that invitation. And the second was, Gabby, did you ever connect with Thayer or somebody about becoming a the second representative? She does not have time, so we are looking for our second rep. I think it would be really good to have somebody on the planning commission. Yeah. Because it's a planning yeah. board. 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 Wyndham, you know, regional planning commission. So I think that would be good. You also, you know, you're involved with reviewing other towns' um, plans. Mm -hmm. So like I'm on a panel that'll do the review for Dummerston in the next couple weeks. So it'll give you a... a, a a broad experience with the planning on a regional level. Mm -hmm. People there are really good to work with um, from the other towns. It's, you know, there's actually a lot of people from the select board, a lot of people who are just interested in either natural resources or transportation or something, those type of planning. Mm -hmm. um, so are you going to reach out to the planning commission or would you like me to? Thayer said she would. She will. Okay, so you may Maybe have somebody it didn't happen after, yet, but not, it didn't happen at the last meeting, so um, I don't know if you want me to. I'll send, I'll shoot her it. another email and just said, hey. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. We're so yeah. lucky to have that resource um, to have. Is there a night there. that you don't have a meeting? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Those meetings are good. I like the people on them. They're really interesting. I have my own copy, thank you. Because yeah, I have you my own. Okay. I do because I, I, there, there, I just there's to a make couple sure mistakes. <laughs> so the, the copy that I have is the uh, final draft of the 2018 2019 select board goals. Um, so uh, once again, you've all had a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, um, and one of, there are a couple of edits that I wanted to make, and I wanted to make a comment. I don't know if other people had things as well. So I'll start. Um, under 1A, uh, I think we should say using our meetings as an opportunity to speak to our TV audience from time to time or to our audiences. And, you know, because I think audiences would be fine. Okay. Um, under the other um, edit is under 2I, my name is misspelled. I misspelled my name. And under, under 2I, <laughs> emergency management, Sheila. Right. You just need a little There's, A there. I misspelled my name. You need an there A there. <coughs> 4A should be put systems in place for contracts, grants, and project review. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I wanted to note is we have one, two, three, four, five, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten sort of subcommittees in this structure, which I'll, I'll read just for everybody's edification. Um, town Administrator Supervision and Workflow, HR, Communications, Grants, Finance, Legal Contracts Ordinances, Economy including Internet Infrastructure, and Housing including Senior and Affordable, um, Buildings and Grounds, and Emergency Management. So that's a number of sub responsibilities that we, we um, allocate among ourselves in addition to which it was not noted here and it's not really a goal but I just wanted to recognize the all the work of the um, um, the select board we have um, the rec the liaisons to the rec the cemetery and the planning commissions the Algiers fire district the rescue Inc and Wyndham Regional Commission and from time to time Wyndham solid waste management district and I am sure that that is not a Green River Watershed Association, not a comprehensive list. So um, I just, um, I want to thank everybody for all the time that everybody puts in to this town for all of these different things. It's a, it's a list. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, we don't just sit here two hours on a Monday night twice a month. So um, we put a lot of work into this. Um, so can, I, can I suggest an edit? You may suggest an edit. Uh, under 4A. Put systems in place for, shouldn't there be a verb there for something to contracts, grants, projects, project review? 
for review and approval? Yes, yeah, something like that. Oversight and management of contest yes. grants and projects. Yes, yeah. Thank okay, you. so oh, for oversight and management mm -hmm. of yep. contracts, to, grants, and projects. Yeah, got it. Is that good for you? Yeah. Sounds wonderful, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to get another award. <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I actually, th I had something come up with my time in the last couple of months, so I actually would... Well, there's two reasons. A, I think finance and legal, it needs to be taken care of by someone who actually is going to, you know, has a term that's long. So that you're not, I mean, part of that, my idea was that you have two people. So when, when the terms shift, you wouldn't lose that information. So I think those are, finance in particular needs to be someone who's not going to lose that information. The same thing with the contra you know, contracts and ordinance. I prefer not to be on any, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to decline. <laughs> you don't want to be on any committee, well, subcommittee? I prefer not to. And I think what are we going to do with that your legal expertise? I think particularly something like finance, it needs to be someone who has a term that's not going to expire soon. What do you consider long? It's three years. Well, two I have two years, years have so I guess I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking on anymore. I mean, the idea no, was to have two people to stagger, right. stagger terms right. that you never. That was my idea, at least. If I it's only going to be one person, it needs to be someone who's on a two, you know, a longer term period. It would be my suggestion. Well, I'd be willing to help on the finance thing, but again, I have only a two-year term on the legal side. I have less than Contracts. that, so you're all good. <laughs> you're ahead of me. <laughs> I, I thought when you threw that out there, I said I would do that with you. Yeah, and I don't, and again, I'm But I'm also doing it. HR, internet infrastructure, not granted, that's probably not going to be in buildings and grounds, so I'm not sure I want to be responsible for all three of those or four of those things. Um, so I have an idea about finance, which is we did a lot of work this year. Thank you, Gabby. We have a pretty good grounding. Um, we have a um, we have access to the NIMRC uh, consultant Cynthia mm -hmm. Stoddard, who has agreed um, to undertake um, sort of being the consultant to Guilford, um, and um, I think we've gotten ourselves in a position right now where we're really confident about mm -hmm. the tools that we have. Um, the processes that we've put in place, I think we might get to the point where we could get a balance sheet still that we don't have. Um, maybe you could help with that still, Gabby. Um, I think we've gotten, we've made a lot of headway on, uh, on contracts and, and uh, pro in projects. So um, first of all, I don't think this is gonna be such an onerous thing. Secondly, I would suggest that under, under finance, the subcommittee be a consultant, not a subcommittee. Um, and that we maybe just continue our overall responsibility on this. Um, and in so, excuse me, are you suggesting that we take finance off the subcommittee um, list entirely? Yeah. Oh, great. Sure. And move it to a, another consultant. I do think yeah. that somebody does need to be on top of that, though, because the consultant can leave. You know, and that's what right. one of the, the things, the impetus is for having the select board actually be in control of the finances is that we should be, A, mm -hmm. and B, that there was a lot of turnover and a lot of stuff got lost in the weeds just because people yep. needed to catch up. Okay, so everybody has to run again. Um, let's kind of wing it for now. I mean, I don't think... I'm just putting it, I don't want to, you know, yeah. I, don't, I can't overcommit my time and so yeah, I don't right. want to put... I, mean, well, I, I don't want to get things that aren't well done either, so... Yeah. But it's not really the, I mean, that's not the goal. The, the goals are the important right. material yeah. that right. we're looking at here, not who's responsible to yeah. uh, supervise them. Okay, so are we ready to adopt these goals? I don't know we need a, I don't know we need a motion. I don't know that we do either, but yeah, as long it's as we're agreed that what these are the goals, as we've... This is just, what we'll work to. All right. So we'll put those into the our projects and priority spreadsheet. Okay. Check. One one question from the BCTV camera here. Yes, sir. non guilford resident. Do you believe you'll post those goals on the website soon? Mm, we could. Just a question. Yeah, we're gonna share them with the planning commission, so um, we could do that. Yeah. 
What, why are we sh what's the deal with the Planning Commission? So the Planning Commission asked to see the Select Board goals because they're working on their goals for the next two years. So they wanted to kind of be in sync with the Select Board. Makes sense. Or to be informed by what the Select Board's priorities were. So that was it. And they're, they're going to be talking about that next, next week. So. Well, they had expressed that they had put so much of their time and energy into the energy policy that they were kind of getting their bearings again about yeah. what they wanted to do next. So the select board goals would just help uh, ground them. Oh, okay. Do you think that's a fair I way? I think that's an excellent way of putting it, Miranda. Thank you. So the uh, next item on the agenda is the communications committee report. And we convened a meeting on for May 9th and only Eric and I showed up. <laughs> so we didn't really have a meeting, um, but we did kind of talk about a number of actions, not actions, but like ways to think about this and ways to present it to the board. And, and Eric sort of walked away with um, some ideas that he's going to try to put together and he'll talk with the communications committee and then we'll come to the whole select board. So that was basically, and Peter was a, a good addition to that discussion. Um, also, Veranda and Steve Lemke, the floodplain administrator, and I met regarding uh, last Friday, last week, um, the flood and fluvial erosion hazard communication, ordinance communication schedule, like otherwise known as yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, we have a couple of um, immediate actions to take. One is we're going to try to figure out what other communities are doing um, and see, and uh, I have to write to VLCT about that, and I haven't done it. And Steve, you were going to do something else, but I don't have those notes tonight. Do you remember what you were going to do? Well, we were going to find out um, the VLCT side of things, and we were also going to find out whether the, whether about adoption process, remember? Uh, right. Okay. So the question was, are we, is the wording of the, um, uh, the vote in November going to be, shall the select board be authorized to adopt the ordinance, or do we have to adopt it and then have the select board, have the town ratify it? And I think it's going to be the first, but we need to confirm that. That's so, correct. That is what they told me. That the, the town authorizes the select board to adopt the ordinance? Okay. Without, without re-adopting, yeah. you just go yeah. to the vote and, yeah. and be, take your guidance from the vote. Correct. Okay. So the vote is non-binding, right. but it would give you the direction mm -hmm. which to head in. Okay. Because of the fact that it relates to flood, and flood hazard um, regulations, that only the select board has the authority to um, adopt um, regulation around that, it, that residents do not. Um, that's why it's a non-binding vote, okay. which is what we talked about previously. Right. Forgot that. Thank you. But Peter, just to clarify that it's non-binding in the positive, it is binding in the negative. That is correct. Absolutely. Either we're authorized or not to vote. <laughs> right? Um, so the vote will be on November 6th, um, and we have a couple of weeks to get out the vote. Um, and then we, and then preceding that, there will be connecting with different boards in town to talk about it and putting up all the documents and the videos on the town website. Um, there's going to be a Green River Watershed Association present presentation. Um, I think Danny might be there also um, on August 28th, uh, which we'll talk about a lot of these things, but not only. And um, and we'll have a an article in the next Gazette, and we'll the get out the vote will also be probably talked about on the Guilford Town website, front porch forum, election electronic election signs and articles in the reformer in the comments. So we have dates and you've, we've shared all of that with you. Does anybody have any suggestions? Or so there won't be a, 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 another town-wide meeting? I don't think so. I mean, people wow. just say the same things over and over again. But I think it's the right to do so, and I think we actually need to listen. I mean, to, you know, like it's our job to listen and not assume that they're what they're gonna say, I guess. I think I would be in, in strong favor of having another town wide. I'd also be in favor of having a mailer or a postcard go out. Maybe it could go out for tax bills, so I, you're not having to do postage twice. Um, Good idea. Ooh. I would say that 
to you know to me and I would actually I put it on our agendas every week let them, let people come out and tell us one way or the other so people don't feel disgruntled and like they weren't heard or didn't have the opportunity to be heard because that's sort of what I was feeling from people but, you know at least they had that perception whether it's you know um you think and once least a that, month would be sufficient instead of every every month? Something like that. Yeah, like it's always on the first, you know, something like that. But always have it on the agenda so there's every opportunity for people to come out and get their voices heard. But I agree. I think a meeting, another town meeting, Maybe it should, offered, be. Should, should be offered up again. Maybe I, it should I, be a question and answer for uh, yeah, format. Yeah. Not, not informational. Inform, you know, let people but, ask their yeah, questions yeah. Uh, and, and have them answered. Only because I'll be honest with you, the turnout we had for the, the the one we did, I thought was terrific. You know, in terms of the, the individuals that showed up for it. And but look at how many people didn't know. And what then was hearing that some people didn't feel that they were informed, you know, uh, correctly or whatever. I just think there are enough other people out there that might come to a meeting for information. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be a positive thing. And I, I, can I also make a suggestion that we actually get the people the information they ask for, which I think is fair about what was, I mean, I would look at property values and say, what happened in 2007 when we did that other ordinance? Did um, properties values just drop off the face? I mean, that was a, con a concern, and I think that it would be helpful to address that concern head on with actual data. Right, or you can ask, you know, see what happened in Brattleboro. I don't know. Like, look at a like town. And, you know, because. I don't think the property values just tanked. I don't know what the effect was, though, either. And I think that putting the facts out there... that's a driving there, force of what people yeah, are concerned about. Yeah, that's what I heard, their major concern. Um, good questions, good ideas. Um, just to note, I, would, I need to check with Penny um, whether or not we can, the town can legally send additional information with tax bills. I well, we said the B, the BT alert thing, mm -hmm. and yeah. we've said we've done it before. Past. Yeah. Um, do you think it would be a good idea, Steve, to put um, to to expand the Green River watershed thing to include a Q and A mm -hmm. time at the end of that that we might get a lot of people? Just for the purpose of the camera, the Green River Watershed Alliance is uh, um, is going to do. Uh, a, a separate meeting, you know, they're they're taking full charge. Emily Davis and, and others from the group are taking full charge of the meeting. So they haven't, they in a positive way, they have not reached out to say we need somebody else to do this. So I think it's really important that we allow them to say yes or no to that mm -hmm. suggestion, so that so that they can have a very separate meeting if that's what they because it's about storytelling of Irene and things, yeah. which is very different than yes, the town I meeting agree. that we had, mm -hmm. which was. This is what has happened in the past. This is what's going to happen, and this is a much. I think theirs is a much broader uh, reach to the entire community to say, do we all know? Do all of us know what each of us knows? And mm -hmm. I think that's what they're trying to, to try to bring. So I would, I would be very cautious about combining things there, um, that would sort of co-opt that meeting or change the design of that meeting, which is very, very informational on a broader scale of sharing. So. It may be a different audience to to some degree, but I think not that, um, totally. But, but having the this broader context and then allowing people to ask questions after, a we'd probably get more people there. Um, but this isn't really directed, directed towards Guilford's. I mean that that group has a different mission, so I think if we have flyers or something, if you have more questions, come to this other meeting. I, I mean, that would be my preference anyway. I, I agree with you. I, I think that, it's, it, that it, it's incumbent upon us to have another public meeting, where just because of the tone that we experienced uh, at our select board meeting when sure. the, the public was here, I mean, they're, they're wanting to have another opportunity, at least another opportunity to express their feelings and, and ask questions. Well, and I think that we should be very targeted in addressing their concerns, I mean, about property values and, and how we plan to address, how they can address the changes in their property values from having their land uh, and houses be in 
a flood plain, you know, a hazard zone. <coughs> I mean, people want to know about that, and we've been talking about it, you know, in a case-by-case -case basis, but there are certain things that everybody wants to know, and I think it's incumbent <coughs> on us to show that we care. Yep, I agree. I'd like to say one more thing. I think it's important that we share as much information we can with those people who are directly impacted and those people who aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, because, and the hardest group to reach just generally uh, about the, the good or bad of a, <coughs> of a court of uh, ordinance would be everybody. You know, so I think, I think if we can position them that way, if you have specific questions, come on this night and we can talk through more of that. If you'd like to join this other meeting on August 28th, which is a sharing of stories about this, I mean, I think we should make them well known, but but it's reaching both of those audiences, right. and and we could do that with with one message, right? Yeah. This is all very helpful. Thank you, everybody. So, any more discussion on this? So, who has the action item on that? Because it was me. a good discussion, this but I just want to make sure someone's Miranda. moving forward on that and is responsible. This is your communication subcommittee. So you're going to take the the lead on all those and report back. Yeah. We yeah, I think the, that we can um, we can come back with a proposal. Yes, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. That'd be great. Uh, about a public meeting uh, aimed at people who aren't uh, whose land and property isn't immediately impacted. Uh, or do you think that we should have one meeting for both? One meeting. One, one meeting, one meeting for, for everybody. Question and answer time. Uh -huh. There's a there's a lot more to be done on this too. We have a lot to do. There's a lot of action on this. Yeah. And to make sure we get the, our articles in the Gazette yep. on With time. Because yep. I think we have probably two more. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, on the uh, next update is that our next select board meeting is going to be on Wednesday the 30th, not Monday the 28th. So just so everybody knows that at 6.30. And Peter, I wanted to remind you that um, it needs to be changed in the reformer. Okay. Because okay. they don't change that yep. someti sometimes. Um, that's because of the holiday, right? Yeah, that's Yeah, that's Memorial, Memorial Day. Memorial Day, yeah. Um, does somebody have warrants? Gordon, did you do those? I don't know. Thank I, you, I, had Steve. I looked at them very quickly. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Bye bye, Steve. Bye Thanks Steve. for everything. So I will make the motion to pay um, payroll or, or <laughs> pay the following warrants: payroll week ending um, 430 2018 for eight thousand ten dollars and fifteen cents. Payroll week ending May 6, 2018 for six thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and sixteen cents. Payroll week ending May 13th, 2018 for five thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars and fifty-one cents. Expense warrant number one eight two one for twenty-eight thousand seven hundred eighty-seven dollars and sixty cents. Expense warrant number FS two one for two thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. Expense warrant number RC21 for $50. Expense warrant number FW21 for $187 for a grand total of $51,674.17. Um, I noted on expense warrant number 1821 for the $28,787. The main things that I saw in that were a further purchase of salt sand, gravel, chloride, so a lot went to Dan's highway department, a, a big piece of that. It looked like retirement. I think he got a good, excuse me for interrupting, yes. I think that he got a good deal on that. And that's yes, why yes, that's why now, he, yeah, I didn't mean As opposed to it. waiting until no, next winter. He, and you're, yeah. Thank you, Sheila, for that caveat. That's why he, he, did, he did that. Yeah. Um, and it looked like there were um, a retirement account. Yeah. Um, deposit. Yeah. Deposit. And then Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, were the main things. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain because I came from another meeting, so I didn't look at these at all. Okay. Um, if you have any requests, if there's any way we could do it, like a, if payroll can be run, or the warrants can be done on a Thursday, so we can actually look at them and not have to run in like 10 minutes. 
before the meeting. The, it was in the floor. But it's just the the sheet. The, the uh, Peter, yeah. I for, for I thought has been very helpful in providing. I don't. I I thought it was in this week. It was it in was, this week. Yeah. The, the, I looked at them. The the sheet on the I don't know what they call. Yeah, it, but you can't look at the bills. You know. No, you can't. So, but what, so you want them to post all the bills, or to have them available here so you can look at them. Well, that's more. A, is that a if, how, Peter? Is that possible? I mean, you you guys would have to come in and take a look. I mean, this week was a slight exception because um, Ellie had a family situation that she had to take care of, and so she was out for several days last week, and so it was only uh, partially completed. Uh, when she needed to leave and so she completed the rest of it this morning um, but uh, based off of the general needs of the, the town clerk's office as well as the request of the select board quite a while back um, with few yes. exceptions these the warrant has generally been completed um, on the Thursday prior to the oh, select board meeting so yeah. but that's Thursday aside afternoon. From, so when would you come in? Aside from payroll, payroll. Yeah, I did things on the week, weekends. You would you would be able to get in here on the weekend and look. It just I know I'm always going to have a transportation meeting right before this meeting, and the other time I'm coming from Montpelier, so I just, I just know it's I'm not going to be able to get yeah. here ten minutes no, before. No, so and the issue is, is that I, thought um, I believe that Penny normally keeps the warrants and checks in the vaults over the weekend. That's probably oh, that well, that's what I was wondering from a security the standpoint, where would they live? So I won't get that. <laughs> I hope not. I don't know how to get in the building after So uh, I will let you, I will tell you, Gabby, that tonight I looked at a few and talked to Peter about the coding on a couple of them. So just checking on things. Um, so I'm not sure so how, how we would, look, yeah. yeah, I don't know how you would... I don't know if it's possible. I just put the request out yeah. there if yeah. it's possible. Yeah, I don't know. Because well, I know I can't get here before, and I work all day, so it's like, yeah, I know I can't. Um, are there communications? There's two very brief ones, if I may share them with you. Um, the first was a thank you card from um, Jen Stromston and all of the staff at Sebids. Um, thank you to both the select board as well as all residents of the town for uh, funding them again this year. Um, if you want to see that, it's here. The second uh, communication was from uh, Chris Campany at Wyndham Regional Convention uh, announcing that the Wyndham Regional Energy Plan was adopted as an amendment to the Wyndham Regional Plan uh, by the Commission at its meeting on April 24th. And so this is just their official notification to all towns that it was adopted. And but it's going to be reviewed by the PU. It hasn't, it needs to go up to the state for review before it's like official. final, final. This is just the commission's adoption of it. Uh, the commission adopted it, and so it'll be reviewed by the state. Mm -hmm. um, and then the towns that want to can be Acts 174 compliance and get substantial deference with this, with the solar. Or if any of the any. So this was notification that it's being sent to the state. Yeah, but just to be clear, we're not going to be 174 compliant no matter what. So it doesn't necessarily have that big of an impact For us. on Guilford per se. Thank you for that. Yeah. So I have two other small notes. One is that um, in the last three or so weeks, I have been putting a notice on Front Porch Forum about our meetings with the sort of key points of the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and I also put the stuff on there about um, contractors for, you know, yes, the ability to contract for the town office that. renovations. Um, and um, people have come up and just said thank you to me for doing mm -hmm. that that um, and then the other I got an email to my personal account um, saying thank you in for, for putting it on front porch forum that somebody doesn't have time to come here but she reads all the agendas and minutes and excellent she was great. really grateful so, so good use, good, to ask, right good use of my time thank <laughs> you for doing that. Um, and the other is that Peter is taking a few days of vacation over the next several weeks including one week in June. Third week of June. Third week of June. Mm -hmm. So just so that and mm -hmm. so there'll be a, 
out of office yeah. message. Oh, I just wanted to note that the Rec Commission put on a lovely bike night event at the school at the end of that dismal day. At least 25 kids were there, and I think we've recruited a new Rec Commission member oh, out great. of the families so who nice. came. They just work so hard. Yeah, the Rec Commission is really yeah. fabulous. They're doing a great job. Yeah, They put in a Engaged. lot of time, and they have they think outside the box and they're trying to do a lot, so it's yeah. impressive. Yeah. All our commissions are impressive, but <laughs> well, just make it appear new, be there doing, you know, they're doing a lot of great stuff for the town. So it's and doing a lot of it together maybe on maybe. their own initiative. And yeah. they're networking. They're making that's what I mean. They're making the connections yeah, with directors. Directors, so it's nice. So um this someone one of the three oh, oh, a journal really? meeting. Did I ask oh, sorry, Dolores. Um I was just wondering I couldn't make it here for your um, building thing that you had on the 23rd. So that was the last one, right? Mm -hmm. The last. And I was wondering where you, I had a few questions about that. If you got a couple minutes. So is that something we can do offline? Or or do you feel like it should? Um, I don't. I mean, it's 8.30. So, I mean, I don't know what your questions are. So my questions are like where I mean, did you decide everything what you're gonna do from what I saw of the uh, of the um, I looked at your television program mm -hmm. and it was kind of like up in some of it was up in the air still. Yeah, we're so waiting I didn't for know where you were for the proposals. Um, you know, there was the baseline, and then there was all this other extra. So I didn't know. Did you vote and say yes for the baseline? Yes, I think well, we did no, vote for the baseline. Well, no, we don't have a cost. That was a cost estimate. I just want to be very, very yeah. clear. We did not vote for that. We voted we, to get a GMP, the gross, the guaranteed, the no, guaranteed maximum, maximum price. price. Yeah. Right. There's no contract in place with anyone right now. But like, okay. We, uh, the one big thing I was think saw was like your siding, and. Um, as a painter, um, you have vinyl siding on. It's like maintenance free. So you tear it off, put on all this, put new siding on. <coughs> Hemlock was one of them. Ugh. It's like, it's, it's constant maintenance to do, to do, to put something like that on. So I don't, I don't know where you would go or when I would come to say like, that seems kind of silly, to tear off Vinyl siding, that's, I mean, it's not beautiful, but it's, you know, it certainly works. And it looks, it, it's looked fine for however long it's been here. And then to put on um, something that has a maintenance factor, um, I mean, paint, you have to paint it every five years. And hemlock doesn't hold up for siding. I mean, so things like that is like, it, that didn't make sense as far as a taxpayer goes. Um, that it, it just seemed like, for one thing, the price was horribly expensive. But then to turn around and tear off something perfectly good siding and replace it with something that's going to have to have a maintenance factor, continuous maintenance factor, to me was ridiculous. So I think that. Um it is the feeling of the contractor and the architect that our siding has reached its 25 to 30 year limit and that it is brittle and falling apart in various places and it is pretty much at the end of its life in general around the building although we could vote to just keep it and replace it as it fails but that's also an expense to to do things on a piecemeal and then the vote was taken to was it going to be What's the stuff that we voted for? It was like a compressed wood. Yeah, com manufactured wood. Yeah, um, LP siding or something like that, I think. And the versus hemlock, and um, three of the select board members voted to get the bid on the hemlock. But again, it's this a is a bid. This is yeah. not. So if you have an opinion, please tell us. What it mean? I mean, if you want to do something other than, I appreciate you waiting two hours to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> or oh to put it goodness. in a letter, or to come and talk to Peter. Um, stop by the office, call, email, write whatever you want to do, whatever is the easiest vehicle for you, because I didn't vote for anything aside from getting a GMP, and we'll see what that comes back at. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, I didn't know where it was left. And we've but also, on the website and in the emails that I sent out, it said if you have comments or questions, please contact Peter. Mm -hmm. So that, sorry, not or the email. Peter, yeah. <laughs> the front porch forum notice that I sent. I, so we put it on our front porch forum, it's, and it's also on the camera, and it's on our web, on the town website mm -hmm. to contact Peter if you have opinions or questions about things. And are, is the entire plan now up on yep. the website? And the capital needs assessment is up there. Um, the whole it was put up several days after that. Maybe. Yeah. Well, because so no, we don't, I thought we didn't have the whole plan. The I, I thought we didn't have the civil and all that. I updated it. Okay, so everything is now up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So look on the website or come here and grab you know Peter's copy. Look at the look at the actual plans because mm -hmm. the only thing that was at that meeting were floor plans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I mean, but then there was a lot of different components that was. Um, I didn't know if what parts of it you took and what parts of it you didn't. It was kind of, I mean, at the end of the, at the, end of the, uh, the television program, it seemed like it was kind of vague as to, as to yeah, what Yeah, we're still waiting for the bids to come in and the, on the guaranteed maximum price. Mm -hmm. I, don't dis I know what you're saying. I don't disagree. I don't think that it was made clear as to exactly what was happening and what the process forward was. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is there's time to change. Mm -hmm. And there might be a different thing when we come back with the proposed GMP. Mm -hmm. So and you I know like what you said is that there should be a time after that that you shouldn't have voted on, you know, which you didn't. But the town townspeople, I think, really should have. There should be an opportunity to have have some input. So we did make a special outreach before that meeting to let people know that this was a, a meeting that was taking place at the school and it was going to be focused primarily on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then... But, it, but even so, with that meeting, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of concrete mm -hmm. um, I, I totally proposals. understand what you're saying, which is why I said what I said, because the entire plans weren't there. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of information provided. So I, I really do appreciate that you actually watched this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and please do take the time and look at the plans because we, I mean, we just got them as far as what the, are they construction documents, Peter? No. Are they, they just, you know, what are, they're not final construction? No, they will not complete those until they get the um, fire a permit from the Division of Fire S Safety. So where are we? 50% like, DD? Uh, yes. Okay. So we're not at construction documents, so we haven't even gotten our permits. But then so the, the meeting at the uh, school was for public input on, on what we knew. Mm -hmm. what, uh, on I, that. I couldn't make it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I sat through it anyway. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah, and I think get your you know get your comments into Peter. And there's like I said, I don't consider anything final right now. We certainly don't have final documents. So, mm -hmm. but the, the minute we had we got the what did do you have in your hand the cons the the um, contract proposal, the proposal documents, RFP documents. I don't have, I, Peter gave you a big, everything that's on the, the website. They're the plans. The plans, okay. So we have like 13 pages of plans up on the website mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And we put the cost estimate up there too, right? Yep. So all that information, and I know the cost estimate's not very clear. You have to, you know, dig down into exactly what, because, you know, the estimator did it. Mm -hmm. Dig down into it and see what they're actually specking. But that's so what we is, have. So is GPI actually hired? They were hired to do our cost yeah. estimate and to get a GMP to us. But not necessarily to do the work. Well, they will, you know, they, it depends. The, I mean, I don't want to say anything before they, they do the price, right? Right. But I didn't know if you were locked into having um, those guys. Do They're going to be our CM. Contract mm -hmm. manager. Construction. Construction. They were hired to do the, they, they retained to do the construct, construction, construction management. Manager. Pending a GMP. Um, so, for example, uh, Dennis Franklin came in and looked at the plans and gave us a whole lot of information. We had a lot of questions at, at that last meeting about HVAC and how expensive it was. And Dennis spent some time in here going over the plans and making comments. So, mm -hmm. um, so we're getting some pretty valuable input from different people in town. Well, that's good. Yeah. Alan Belleville helped, you know, mm -hmm. on some things, so it was good. Thank you for staying for the whole yeah. meeting to yeah. raise us well, well, the chairs are so comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are comfortable chairs. Uh, would you like I to make a motion to be fast? We are adjourned.
No, we adjourn. Adjourn. Oh, I motion that we adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I move. At 8.40. Is there a second? Second. Second. Gordon, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye.